Hello, good day and welcome back to Go on the Run. So I did not want to wait too long to post this video. So this is going to be a really short video and I'm not even going to edit it. I'm just going to record it and sort of post it. And so in the previous video, we had gotten our mini cube installed and that should be up and running. And now you know how to have a Kubernetes cluster. Now, like I said in that video, there are two ways. If you watch that video, there are two ways to have a mini a, a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster. You can either, either have the cluster that is created in Docker desktop, in which case you see how to stop that, start that, no management required there really. But if you did, when the mini cube wrote, then you know that all we had to do was run the mini cube command, and then you can say start to start a cluster. And then, of course, it will start a cluster for you. And remember, this can take a long time if it has to pull some updated images or whatever. But since I have that already, notice my startup here in like eight seconds. So we left off in that video with your cluster running. But you may want to stop your cluster. I mean, um, for whatever reason, maybe something might go bad with it or some configuration or whatever. You just want to start over. So in that case, what you can do is just type the minikube command. If I can type, and if you press enter, you'll see a number of subcommands. Now, the only subcommands I'm going to focus on, that's why I call this mini cube basics, are basically, or really, these commands in the basic commands here. So you can see we ran start already to start our cluster. Um, you can type status to get a status of the cluster, and all that good stuff, right? Just makes sense here. Stop, delete the cluster, and of a dashboard, which I'll show you the dashboard command to explain how oh, I have that dashboard in my web browser and you could pause your cluster if you don't want to um, delete the whole thing, but maybe because the cluster is running, it's going to consume resources, right? System resources, memory, CPU cycles. And so maybe if you were doing something intensive, maybe you might want to pause it so it doesn't cons consume those system resources. So let's go with Minikube status. And so it's going to tell me here that how my Minikube cluster is up and run it, running. And there's the type control plane. We're not going to explain any of that right now. Um, the host will run it. Kubelet is running. Again, these are different components of Kubernetes. And it just tells us hey, all those different things are running. And they could, um, and finally, um, my kube configuration file is um, configured. If you remember, the kube config file is that file that I told you that in Twilder that, you know, kubectl, kube, and essentially config. I'm not going to show you that because I did that in a previous video and I want to make this video short. So what we can do is now our cluster is up and running and we have the status of it. We can do minikube delete. And so that will destroy our cluster. And so if I were to go to the dashboard here, if I'm using, in this case, Docker desktop, you can see that our in terms of container, there's nothing running. But if I do start, you'll see that it'll create some containers um, for me. And you can see those are coming up, and they're all going to be related to um, Kubernetes. OK, so all this is fine. So now you know to see the status of your cluster. If you're not sure if it's running or not, you know how to delete it. If it's running and you don't want it anymore, maybe it's corrupted or something. Um, certainly, you can pause it and unpause it, so I'm not going to show that. Um, the only other thing I'm going to show now, once this comes up, is the dashboard. And so, let's wait for this to come up. Now it's taking a little bit longer. Okay, 30 something seconds this time. So I'm going to say mini cube dashboard. And if I run this command, what happens is it installs the software to run a dashboard. We're not going to worry about that. It deploys it, and then it opens my web browser to that link. Now, there's an option you can pass it, whether it should open your browser or not. We're not going to cover about all that. So here's that um, dashboard, what it looks like. It basically show you all the different types of things that you can have, resources you can manage in Kubernetes, right? Chrome job deployments, which we haven't covered, jobs. Pods, all this stuff. So if I mentioned um, Kubernetes, multiple containers running. Uh, we grouped them into pods. We're going to see that in the very next video how to create pods. But 
you can see all of that here. Now, because our works, our namespace is default, we don't have anything running in namespace, but as you can see, there are multiple namespaces. So a namespace is just a way to group a set of re related resources for management. So all the things, pods, jobs, and everything that has to do with Kubernetes, well, kubesystem is going to be under here. Everything that has to do with, you know, this dashboard is going to be under dashboard namespace. And of course, we can see here that there are two deployments, two pods, and replica sets. Again, things we don't know anything about yet, but just giving you an idea. So if I go to the plot again, I don't see anything. If I want, I can just say all namespaces, and it shows me everything. So I see a total of one Damien set is running, three deployments, nine pods, three replica sets, and so on in my system, right? So that's a nice way of seeing what's going on. The things like services and so on, and you can take a look at those with the IP address. Again, we haven't covered any of this yet. I just wanted to show you how you can sort of do so a little bit of management of your mini queue. All right, so with that said, I'll type Control C to stop that and you know break that connection to the dashboard. And then I'm gonna say mini queue delete because I do not want this cluster anymore. No, I could pause it and then when I unpause it, it should be faster than if I start up. But I don't really care. I'm waiting a minute or something. So notice all those con um, containers are gone. And I can even shut down Docker now if I like, because I don't need to use this right now. So that's it. Hopefully this was helpful um, information. And don't be afraid to explore. Definitely take a look at the commands there. Um, if there's something that looks confusing, look at the doc. But you shouldn't have to be touching anything else right now. In the next video, we're going to get into how to create pots and so on. All right. See you later. Take care. And if you like, but before you leave the video, hit a thumbs up, like on the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks. Bye.